Salutations, my friends. I'm back with another build. VR has kind of hit a brick wall and disappeared lately, but there are some promising new headsets emerging onto the market, and with the cost of hardware quickly dropping, it might soon be seeing a slight resurgence. For under $800, you can now build a very capable, all-new VR gaming rig, and for around another $400, grab a decent headset and finally see what the hype was all about. Or, if you just want to play some awesome games at maxed out settings, this is the rig for you. This list will guide you and be your doorway into the exciting digital world. Praise Gaben. May your Steam folder runneth over. Now enough chatter, let's get right to it. For our CPU, let's go with an i5-7500. Deleting controversy aside, this thing is fast. And with this clock speed, it won't melt itself or throttle much. If you want to overclock KB Lake, that's a whole other story and video. This 4 core, 4 thread CPU from Intel is built with the new 14 nanometer KB Lake architecture and was launched in the first quarter of 2017. We've got 6 megabytes of cache, as well as a base clock of 3.4 with a turbo frequency of 3.8 gigahertz. That is fast. It's a socket LG 1151 chipset, the same as Skylake, but has an astounding low 65 watt TDP. This baby should run cool. With a multi-core pass mark score of over 8,000, it's great for rendering. And with a single core score of 2095, it's also great for gaming. It's definitely a quad core powerhouse. The $200 price tag is right on point for this blazing four core console crushing chip. Until Ryzen drops, this is the CPU to get for gaming. Serious bang for your buck. To house our chip and other bits of metal and shiny silicone, let's go with the new Gigabyte GA-B250M. This board is built on the brand new, Cabby Lake capable Intel B250 chipset. This micro ATX motherboard features up to 64 gigs of dual channel DDR4 memory running at a max speed of 2400 MHz. It's got all the standards with one PCIe Express slot, six SATA connectors, and an M.2 connector. We've got decent quality audio and LAN from Realtek as well. For I.O., one PS2 connector for your old school OP keyboard, two USB 2, and four USB 3.1 generation one for everything else. On the board, we've got one CPU fan header, one system fan header, and a clear CMOS jumper. This board looks decently low-key, is built with quality parts, and for a price of $73.98, it's hard to beat. Most importantly, it boots KB Lake right out of the box, and has very efficient power delivery, and a slew of great features from Gigabyte. A good choice for a budget-conscious gamer. For memory, let's grab two sticks of Mushkin Blackline for a total of 16 gigs. This DDR4 memory runs at 2400 MHz with a cast latency of 15 and a voltage of 1.2, perfect for our Intel chipset. It does have some interesting low profile heat spreaders and should keep our rig humming along. For 85 bucks, it's the right price, the right speed, and 16 gigs will be enough for any current title. For storage for our operating system and game downloads, you cannot go wrong with a tried and true Samsung 850 EVO. This is the drive to get for under $100. It's legendary for performance, reliability, and you will find it in many gaming rigs. You can also pick up this drive in the M.2 configuration, but it performs identically and costs a bit more. It features 32-layer, 3-bit VNAND 3D flash technology with a robust Samsung MGX controller. This means good sustained transfers with up to 530 max sequential read and write speeds and around 97,000 IOPS. 250 gigs is a decent amount, but may fill up quickly, so let's also grab a Western Digital Caviar Blue hard drive. This old school spinning bladder hard drive is going to give us plenty of space for very little cache. It spins at 7200 RPMs with 64 megs of cache memory and has a decent latency. It can also hold up to one terabyte of data 
which will give us all the room we need. And with a price tag of under $50, there is a reason you see this drive and so many budget builds. Grab two if you want to rock some RAID Zero. Now, to power our adventure into the VR, we need to push a lot of pixels. 60 frames per second, 1080p, is nothing compared to the demands of virtual reality. We could go with the GTX 1060, with its 6 gigabyte model being a great option, but it is a bit more pricey. And no, my friends, no. I'm a certified Team Red AMD fanboy. And honestly, the RX 480 is probably gonna be the better buy, and it will also only get better with time. The RX 480 comes in two flavors, the 8GB and 4GB models. The benefit of doubling the VRAM on what is essentially an upper mid-tier card is negligible, and the Vega-based GPU on the RX 480 really doesn't need 8GB and will do just fine with 4. It's got plenty of cores and is the current top-of-the-line GPU from AMD and is most certainly VR ready. This RX 480 from MSI features 4GB of GDDR5 running on a 256-bit bus. We've got a boost clock of 1266 megahertz, but this card is a great overclocker, and I'd set it to 1350 to 1400 any day of the week with a 75 degree temperature target. On the back, we've got one DVI-D, two HDMI 2.0, and two DisplayPort 1.4. MSI recommends a minimum of a 500 watt power supply for this card. But personally, I think if you're going to OC this bad boy, 550 or 600 would be slightly better unless you have a very high quality gold rated power supply. This will keep your wattage in the maximum efficiency curve and give you some more wiggle room for 24-7 usage. With an 8-pin power connector and active VRM cooling, this 480 will have plenty of juice for an overclock. It's a dual slot card measuring around 10.5 by 5 inches and has a very stylish black and white MSI armor dual cooling solution. It's both quiet and runs pretty cool. This is the best gaming value right now for around $185. I've even seen them go as low as $150. A 1070 would be a more powerful option, but far exceeds our current price range. For our case, I wanted something subtle but aggressive. Something that says, hey, this box holds the future, so don't touch it. Let's go with the Corsair Carbide 88R. This is a micro ATX mid tower case that is all of that and more. It's well built, looks awesome, and has a lot of the features we need in a gaming PC. It features around 15 by 8 by 17 inches and weighs around 10.6 pounds. We've got one USB 3.0 and one USB 2.0 on the front of the case which is great for a mic, webcam, or even some VR peripherals. It's got one five and a quarter bay, two 2.5, and two 3.5 inch drive bays. This case has excellent cooling for something this size and supports up to five 120 millimeter fans. One is included, and I would recommend grabbing one or two more depending on your ambient operating temperatures. Two intake fans in the front, as well as one in the rear and one on the top, will provide you the best airflow and set you back an additional $10 if you want to grab them in a bundle. Overall, this case is hard to beat, with plenty of room for our GPU and an awesome layout. This thing looks seriously badass, and with the $49 price tag, it was an easy choice to make. To power our rig, let's go with an EVGA 550W. This power supply has plenty of juice with 43 amps on a single 12 volt rail. It's rated at 550 watts, exceeding our GPU's recommendation. The 120 mm cooling fan is very quiet and intelligently controlled by an onboard chip. This power supply has two 8-pin PCIe connectors as well as six SATA connectors, allowing us to max out our motherboard's potential. It weighs around 3 pounds and is from a trusted company in EVGA who makes high quality, cheap power supplies. While it may not be modular, it's still a great buy. I think the best part of all is there's no ugly red and yellow cables, just nice, sleek, solid black. This will keep our system looking clean through the side window. $38 and this gaming beast comes to life. 
Now, for a quick optional pickup on this build, you can grab this 4-pack of 120mm fans from Cooler Master. They are nothing fancy, but for $8, you get 4 pretty quiet sleeve-bearing fans at only 19 decibels that move 44 cubic feet of air per minute each. Not bad. Pop two of these into your case and use the included Corsair fan as an exhaust to keep your temps low and your overclocks high. At this price, why not? That brings our grand total to $777.13. Truly a divine build. This rig has all the muscle VR requires, and the Fire Strike score to prove it, reaching well over 10,000. The Time Spy in DirectX 12 is also not bad either, at over 4,000. This rig is power efficient, powerful, and features some of the latest technologies on the market. It should provide 1440p and 1080p gaming bliss for years to come. Its quad-core KB Lake is also surprisingly good for rendering and content creation. This VR rig is ready for the future. Unfortunately, software is always going to dictate the success of the market for a new product. So until a few more developers jump on board and we see more full-fledged game titles in VR, we will be stuck in the early phase. Still, it's a lot of fun if you've never experienced it, and worry not. This PC is good for a lot more than pushing pixels to a headset. You can game with it. You can create content with it. It encodes. It calculates. It can perform complex mathematical functions. Seriously though, this thing is a beast, and for $777, a pretty good value. It's definitely capable of some 1440p action, and at 144Hz, 1080p is no problem. It will crush any title on the market and will be more than suitable for virtual reality gaming. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more. If you got a thought, let me know down below. And as always, game on my friends. See you again soon.